Hello guys, this is Miki Menez. We are in Hobby Time in Holland and today we are making a special paint demonstration about uh, how to use all kind of products, acrylic, enamel, oils, and how to use them. For example, how to clean it, how to uh, use them in a proper way over different surfaces. Uh, we are not uh, making a completely step by step, that is what you usually do but uh, I will make a different example over different surfaces. Uh, not only um, uh, about to paint military vehicles, but also terrains and maybe something related also with trains. Anyway, what is uh, really important, all techniques that you will see right now can be applied over any kind of modeling. Doesn't matter if it's a plane, science fiction, a train, or um, um, uh, tanks or, or figures. Mm? Uh, so it's very important depending um, the kind of things that you have in your own shop, no? uh, you will be able to adapt them to different subjects. Uh, let's start with something simple. Something simple, but that was a very nice revolution in the modeling. Uh, and it's simple, especially for people who make science fiction, planes and uh, tanks. But also, which is the most important, if some of you are selling um, laser cutted houses, laser cut made in paper, uh, that now become very popular in, uh, in the railway world, um, the shaders are the perfect, the perfect product to paint paper because the paper is very fragile. If you start painting with acrylic, uh, probably you will damage uh, the paper with the water of the acrylics, so you cannot use acrylics to make any weathering in the houses. Uh, also, to paint with enamels can be a bit risky because the enamel um, have a property that expands by capillarity very fast. So, if we paint something uh, made in paper, with enamels, as soon as you touch the, um, the paper, it will expand in all directions and, and, and the building will be destroyed. So that is the best option for people who are making um, paper constructions, but also for people who make planes, because this is very nice to make the, um, to, make the to create the panels, the panel lines in the planes, and as well for the tanks. This is an example that I made a long time ago what you can see here, uh, one example of a white turret, it's a white color, uh, um, just primary, and what I made with the, um, with the shaders. No? As you can see, I painted some kind of shadows with blue and gray colors, and here creating many effects. Or, for example, this one is just uh, painted in base color, just base color, and this side is weathered with the uh, shaders. Eh? You can see a big difference between two, right? Eh? You can create volume and many effects. And one more example, uh, just painted in one base color, and weathered with two or three tons of shaders directly over the surface. Only with that, it's incredible that we can obtain and achieve so many effects. No? So, how to use them? For example, here I have a, one example of turret, already primary in acrylic color. It's very important that we must distinguish always when you are uh, mm, working with paints, that there are many differences between acrylics, enamels, or lacquer. Mm? Inside each type of paint, there are also many variations. But this is the origin of the most of the problems for modelers. Because they buy something acrylic, they try to dilute with hammer or thinner, and hey, what happened? It doesn't paint correctly. Or they use, that. for example, some of you have seen Tamilla paints, right? During many years, Tamilla paints um, seems to be acrylic paint. Mm? And many people use it with something related with water or alcohol, no? because it's acrylic. Uh, well, um, some Japanese people, some Japanese friends told me that uh, those 
Tamilla paints, acrylic Tamilla paints are not acrylic, are in fact lacquer paints. The lacquer paint have a property that allow to that paint to be mixed with any kind of things, even with chocolate or milk, it doesn't matter, no? with everything. So you can mix with water, with thinner and with lacquer thinner and always work. So that is an a, a important property of the lacquer paints, the Tamiya acrylic paints, the typical famous bottles that everybody has seen, right? Someone ha, uh, never has seen Tamiya paints here? No, maybe someone? You? No, ah, ah. <laughs> you? <laughs> Outside. Go <Whoa>. out. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> no, well, those Tamiya paints, in fact, are lacquer paints and they must be diluted with lacquer thinner. And when we discovered a long time ago that those paints are lacquer and not water-based or alcohol-based, we discovered that those paints flow and paint like incredible paradise. But nobody in Europe knew that those paints were lacquer-based paints. Eh? So next time, if you have Tamilla paints in your home, Tamilla acrylic paints, you must recommend to the people the yellow cap thinner from Tamilla. Or any other lacquer thinner like Gallanotes or Mr. Hobby, but lacquer thinner. So, uh, inside the acrylics, there are a lot of varieties. Acrylic doesn't mean water uh, based, mm? means that the base, the structure of the paint is acrylic. Mm, that is a kind of synthetic or plastic, no? but those can be thinned with uh, lacquer thinner or with water or even alcohol. Mm? In that case, for example, the ciders are, um, uh, are uh, water-based paints, just with water, and those doesn't need to be shaked like many others. Eh? Those are a very special uh, product. It's a very special product. Um, looks very dark when you extract from the bottle. You don't need to shake it, remember? And looks very dark, but when you paint it, you will see how it's very transparent. That's tra that transparency um, make of this paint very useful, for example, for the cardboard when we apply with eyebrows. So let's see how to use it. At AMO we have two kinds of air brushes, the air beeper and the air cobra. The air beeper is uh, much more precise and thin and is more useful for, for example, for the shaders, but you can use with any air brush. So let's see how to use over this example, air brush, and let's see what happened and how to use it. We pour uh, the product directly on the air brush inside the cup. Few drops is more than enough because uh, this product covers a lot of surface. So this is why the bottles are so are smaller, in case that someone asks you, hey, it's too small. Yeah, but because with this you, you, can, you can paint a lot of buildings or models or... So just with few drops, you can paint a lot. Well, the pressure. I recommend you, almost for all paints used in modeling, use low pressure, I mean one kilogram or one kilogram and a half will be more than enough uh, to paint camouflage, weathering, and anything that you want. More pressure, more problems you will find in the surface, okay? The first thing that we can see with those paints is that those paints, th those paints doesn't stack or doesn't clog in the top of the needle, mm? because that is a very thin paint. It's almost like transparent. I never get clogged in the in the um, in the eyebrows. So this is highly recommended for beginners or people with not too much experience using the eyebrows. So it's not an excuse for your customer, for example. Uh, hey, I don't know how to use the eyebrows. Doesn't matter. Those paints always work. You don't need um, a specific cleaner. You doesn't need uh, too much ability. Look how very thin lines I can paint continually, non-stop, with a lot of accuracy. Sometimes the people get too crazy with the kind of eyebrows for modeling. Well, if someone has friends inside the illustration, the classic illustration, eyebrowing illustration, 
those people really need very accurate eyebrushes, very accurate ones and very good ones. But in the modeling, with all catastrophic paints that we use, enamel, acrylic, you don't need a super, super eyebrush of 200 or 300 euros. You doesn't need. With one cheap one, I can, uh, I can do almost the same that with an expensive one for modeling, because we are talking about modeling, we are not talking about uh, illustration, okay? So, um, please, avoid the, the people that came to you and tell you, hey, because I want the best eyebrows in the world, because some people told me that, ah, forget it, with this is more than enough, okay? So, especially for the shaders. Uh, what we can do with the shaders? Let me make a bit of zoom. And uh, we can do different things. For example, we can make shadows. Try to imagine that this is also a paper house, a laser paper house, okay? So, we can make shadows. I will try to exaggerate because it's very subtle, okay? But I think that you can appreciate, no? The shadow that I made here. You can see a bit glossy, right? Is where I painted, but it's very subtle. When you are weathering houses, buildings, uh, this is very important because you cannot, you don't want to destroy your building, you don't want to hide the details or the colors. Also, you can make kind of lines of streaking. Imagine that this is a depot of locomotives and you want to make a kind of grind or effects in the walls. The shader works much better over matte or a little satin surfaces. Don't forget it. Over matte or little satin. Never over glossy surfaces. So, if your surface is very glossy, I recommend you to apply a matte coat varnish first. But usually when you paint with acrylic, the look is more or less matte. So this is more than enough to start painting. And obviously, over laser paper houses, you, uh, you don't need to apply any varnish because those are, those are completely matte. But what happens if I want to, to weather something? Oh, this, this is half an engine. Uh, what happens if I want to weather with the um, shader something like this? Hmm? Uh, this is plastic. Uh, and usually the plastic is a bit glossy, uh, especially directly from the kit, when you uh, build the kit and it's look something like that. Usually the plastic is a bit glossy and also um, the plastic contain a kind of grease or oily um, uh, material from the molds. When they construct the, the molds and the kits, it, it has something like oily uh, appearance. Uh, if someone wants to use directly over plastic, first try to clean with uh, soap uh, very well before they start assembling the kit. Second, I recommend you to take uh, something um, like a transparent varnish, something like this. This is uh, uh, transparent varnish, matte varnish. This is from Titans. I highly recommend you, uh, highly recommend you this kind of sprays because you save a lot of time and I use for all my models I always primed uh, prime with uh, with titan sprays uh, we have many different colors and they are very useful those are produced in Italy and uh, the quality is super so I recommend to apply a, a coat uh, a varnish coat over this kit before I start using the shaders in case that you want to try over plastic I will explain you later another technique for the plastic, but this can be an option, okay? Like I told you before, you can make line effects, streaking effects, or even you can use a mask. A tape, we will use the, the tape for masking, and you will see now the contrast.
looks like I am not painting because it's very transparent, right? I, even if I am exaggerating too much, just for you guys, but it's not necessary to exaggerate if you want to be subtle. And now, when I remove it, you see the contrast, right? The, these kind of paints are already like transparent. So even if you try to cover with too many coats, always you will see through the coats. Yeah. Eh? That is very important. With the acrylic paints using transparator is something different because the acrylic paints already cover. If you apply many coats of acrylic paint with transparator, finally you will cover completely everything. With those, you always will see through the paint. Hmm? We are working with transparent um, paint, which is completely different. This is very good when we want to make many effects, but we don't want to cover the camouflage under or the colors under it. Um, let me change the color. Even for example, we can use a blue to see what happened. Eh? Just to make something crazy, we can use the blue color how to clean it and how I clean it. So simple. But I use always the cleaner, the cleaner for everything. Eh? Uh, even the cleaner half, you can see a kind of bubbles inside. Can you see in the screen some bubbles? This is because contain also a kind of lubricant for the eye brushes. Eh? Uh, this is why I recommend you to shake it very well, just in case that someone came to you, hey, my product is uh, have a mistake, have uh, oil inside or, uh, or something like that. No, 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 it's, it, it's in that way, because it's a kind of lubricant for the eyebrows, but doesn't affect to the paints. Just shake it and you can use directly in your eyebrows. Uh, first, I like to, uh, to remove the excess let me show you here. I remove the excess of paint in another place. And with something like this, I took the cleaner, I put inside. Ah, I'm very recommendable for all of you. Use something like that to put the, the jar and avoid that this uh, fall down in your table. Eh? Highly recommend it uh, for people who are not um, too, with too many abilities like me. <laughs> so now I have a, a blue color and you can combine the blue color with the previous one. One more time you can see here that I can make very thin lines. It's so easy to do that but too difficult with acrylic paints. Later I will explain you the problems of the acrylics in comparison with the lacquer, lacquer and enamels. But one more time, even I will use... Mm. <laughs> I need another hand. No, seriously, sometimes I need a, another extra hand here in front just to manipulate the... <laughs> okay, so let's see how the colors can mix together. Even if it is blue, you cannot see real blue over the, the surface of your model. The contrast, right? In the beginning, looks that I am not painting, eh? but uh, see the big contrast that I am creating. The color are mixing together. The previous orange and the blue are mixing together, and they are modifying the base color in that beautiful way. So easy to use. Eh? Remember, here another example. Eh, here using the orange and other kind of dirty colors, yellow. Mm. Or here also with blue and gray. So, eh, 
as soon as we apply the shader, what uh, we must do? If you touch now, you will remove it. For example, let me take a brush. In case that you make, you make a mistake, no? imagine that you are painting, not in the paper houses, eh? careful. In the paper, you cannot remove it. So be careful since the beginning. But here, if now I take water, um, I move here, I will remove it. Hmm? This is good and bad thing. Can you see it? Yeah. This is good because if we commit a mistake, especially in a plane or a tank, we can remove it very fast and repeat again. Uh, it's bad because if now we touch it with water by mistake, we will remove it. So what we must do? We have two options or just let dry for 24 hours and then tomorrow will be completely dry so you can continue working or just apply a matte varnish coat, very subtle, very soft, and will be more than enough to protect it. Even if you want to work with many layers, now apply a, a if you like the results, apply a, a matte varnish and continue painting another matte layer and another uh, coat of uh, shaders. Eh? So this is the way. Anyway, the shaders always let you a bit shiny appearance, a little shiny appearance, a bit glossy, a little satin. So if you are working with something that must be totally matte, I recommend you to apply anyway the matte varnish coat. Okay? It's the only negative point, but some people like it. For some people for fantasy, they like the satin appearance. Uh, but if you prefer everything matte, just apply a matte coat and that's all. Even, I will explain you how to apply a matte coat because not everybody knows how to apply the varnish, especially the lucky varnish. Uh, so how to apply the varnish? Before apply the varnish that I, I have here, the matte varnish, let me do the experiment here with the blue color just to see that you can paint over the plastic. So maybe with this color we can see uh, even better than, than before with the orange one. I will start painting here. The problem is that the plastic doesn't absorb the humidity of the paint. So um, this is why it's better paper or a matte surface than just pure plastic because doesn't doesn't receive the pain in a good way. But for you know that sometimes the people who make trains are a bit scared about to make effects in the buildings or in the trains. Sometimes too much scare, no? And it's normal because they spend uh, 800 euros in a locomotive and they don't want to damage. But come on, the building maybe is 40 euros or, or 50 euros and it's not a problem, no? And one more time with the shaders, they can fix the problems. So I am... Remember what happened before with the, with the tape, no? That when I remove it, you see the contrast. Now you cannot see the contrast because everything is... Um, become painted. But in the end, you will be able to see that it is getting dark and dark with very soft coats. Maybe from the top, you can see. No, no. no. Maybe a little. I, here you can see a bit, no, the, the effects. So for people who are scared with those buildings, they can use that without any problem. But first. Remember the coat of varnish uh, of the um, of the spray, and when it is dry, they can start playing with the shaders eh, without any problem. One important, super important point: the shaders doesn't work over dark colors because those are transparent. So, for all kind of things that uh, are closer to white, it's okay more light color 
much better for the shaders. But for something black, forget it. You must do with acrylics or pigments or any others. Hmm? With acrylic varnish, we must apply a very soft coat to obtain the results. Don't try to cover the, the whole surface with the varnish and overflow the surface with too much quantity. You will see here. So this is the right way to apply the matte varnish, okay? Let me show you the glossy appearance here. Mm, ah, ha -ha. And now... Well, you, you see that now it's glossy, right? Very important, don't overflow it. When you are using enamel, you overflow the surface. But with this, it's not necessary. Can't you see? Almost disappear. Hmm? Of course, I am trying to force with the light to show you the concentration of shader, but almost the glossy appearance disappear. This method is exactly the same for the paints. When, you are, when we are using acrylic paints, is the same. Super fine, super smooth, no problems. I, I, right now I am close to the surface, just blowing eye, okay? If I want to start painting with the varnish, I start moving the eyebrows. Don't let in the same place or you will overflow, okay? So the eyebrows must be always moving, moving and moving. Even only with air. Now painting, now only air. Drying. Okay, this is the way. Let me show you what happens if I overflow it. Like uh, when you are using uh, lacquer, uh, varnish, okay? With lacquer varnish, the people are used to overflow. Like this. They do something like that. Okay? Uh, let me catch... Ah, ah, here. Maybe you will find some customer telling you, hey, uh, this happened to me. Yeah. <laughs> because this is not the way. Too much. Yes, too much. Must be always very smooth layers and letting dry all time. And you will see how the Rosal is amazing, very smooth and perfect. Okay? And this is the same varnish. And look that. And looks glossy. Okay? So, very important when you are using different tools. Must be used in different ways too. Okay? Please, give them something easy and simple. They don't want to paint all, all model again with color. So just apply a transparent primer. This is transparent primer. Okay. And then start making the weathering, which is really fast. Yeah. Even for me, sometimes when I have something like, oh my God, uh, I am lazy. I don't want to paint all the tiles again and one by one. So this is the best option. One more time. Modelers are lazy, especially the railway modelers are terrible lazy. Not all. No, but como que no? <laughs> Almost all. <laughs> no, but you understand what I mean. You want to invest time in another areas of your layout, no? Uh, also in the, um, in the wagons, in the locomotives, in some industrial areas maybe, or in the vegetation, making the trees, the landscapes, and you invest a lot of time doing that. But when you need to paint 20 houses, oh, come on, 20 houses or a, a, a city um, and many buildings in a factory area, uh, come on, it's a lot of work. Let's see more, more things. Uh, just like a, 
rest from one complex technique to the other, let me explain you something easy and fast also. Um, this is something very simple that I wanted to show you and is useful for people making tanks and uh, for people who want to create scenarios with more or less railings and with no knowledge men, and with no abilities. So how to create something like that uh, in a very fast way. For example, if we want to make a field of uh, a kind of farm area or we want to make a terrain, a muddy terrain for a tank because okay, we spend a lot of time making the tank and finally we want to place the tank over a base. No? So for me, this is a very fast solution and that works very, very, very well. And it's so simple like uh, uh, to use those products. This is the small version. Okay, this is the more uh, version that is uh, 100 milliliters, but there are another of 250 milliliters. But those are good also for people who want to make vignettes and small scenarios. And the best way to apply it, because you can see first, uh, you can see that those have different textures and different, uh, not only colors, but also the texture. What is the texture? that maybe uh, the people doesn't know the difference between textures um, and materials and colors. The texture, um, for example, the matte varnish, the satin varnish and the glossy varnish are textures. Those are not paints, are textures. Uh, but I think that I must explain you that just for your knowledge, man. Um, the texture are the surface of the materials. We understand the different materials stand to the textures. For example, if I tell you how is the leather of a seat of a car, the leather, is satin, glossy or matte? Satin. Satin. Eh? <laughs> well, usually the leather is satin, right? And if I ask you for the stone, the stone, the stones uh, in the mountains yeah. are matte. matte. And if I ask you for a Ferrari Testarossa or Lamborghini, glossy, glossy right? So glossy. if we something glossy, we understand that this material is very shiny, clean, right? And also probably metal. Hmm? The metal is very shiny. If we see something satin, we, or brine, make the interpretation that this surface is um, something like leather or more soft. And if we see something completely matte, we will uh, find that this material is uh, poroso. ¿Cómo es poroso? Con oh, mucho... ¿Poros? <laughs> <What's this? laughs> es poroso. Um, so that is a very important information for Brian. So if we see a model that contains all kinds of textures, uh, this will help us to understand the different materials if this is wood or metal uh, or concrete or stone, right? Um, in the nature, everything has a different texture. And the texture is something like this. For example, a satin, a glossy, sorry, a glossy surface, a glossy surface is straight, completely like a line. This is why we see the signing of, of the Lamborghini like a very thin, very thin lines no, of uh, highlights. Because the light is coming in this direction and reflect in only one direction. And this is why we see very sharp signings in, the, in a car, right? What happens when the texture is satin? A satin texture is something like this. Right? And when the light is coming, the light is reflected in more directions. Okay? This is a satin surface. And a matte surface is something like this. If you see through the mi microscope, I mean. This is a matte surface. Matte, satin, glossy. Right? So, 
the reflection here is in all kind of directions and very unregular. So pff, this is why we interpret, we understand that that surface is matte. Um, remember what I told you with the shader, that it's better to apply the shader over matte surfaces or satin. Why? Because the particles of the color will be holded here. Hmm? This is the color. So uh, it will fix over the surface. But if we apply the shader or pigments, and remember this because I will explain you later about pigments. If we apply the pigments or shader or any paint over a glossy surface, will be very easy to remove it with your finger when you touch it. This is why when we apply the pigments over something, for example, a wagon in a train, the surface must be matte if we want that the pigment stay in our wagon or in our tank or in any surface. Eh? So please don't forget that glossy satin and matte are textures and they can be used for the different techniques, uh, for example, shader, pigments and many others. So, now, if we see this, you see here that both, uh, all of them are matte. But please tell me which one is dry matte. This, this or this? The first, the second or the third? Which one is dry matte? This one. Why? It's not reflecting any light. Yes, exactly. No humidity, no fresh, no uh, water. So is totally dry and your brain is interpreting that this is dry matte. In fact, this is a, a texture, a plastic texture, it's not matte. Mm? So I am cheating you, I am <laughs> I'm like a magician. Which one? So we are, in fact, when we are making modeling, we are cheating the eyes of the spectator. Eh? We are cheater, cheaters. Mm? With this texture, we are cheating the eyes and we are explaining to the, to the spectator that this is dry matte, not only because it's matte and doesn't reflect light, also because the color. The color also helps us to understand that this is dry matte, because usually the dry matte is lighter than the fresh matte. Eh? And probably all of you think that this is fresh, right? Fresh matte texture. And this is a kind of intermedium. Eh? But the color is also working together with the texture. Eh? Here is the best example how work, uh, two concepts are working together. So, to make uh, something like that, here I prepare some materials. And the best way to apply this is using a sponge. Also, the good point of those textures is that can be, uh, can be mixed with hair, branches from trees, Mm, even leaf, little materials from your garden in case that you want to make a, a big surfaces with uh, a nice texture. They can be mixed together to create different variations and the best way is to be uh, to be uh, applied with a sponge like this and directly over a primary surface for example in dark brown or black color. First, we will apply a uniform coat over the surface. Uh, like I told you in the beginning, I make trains too. I make uh, HO and N. And many of my terrains in my train are made in this way. With the sponge, you will make a very uh, flat surface, trying to make, trying to avoid to make um, lines like this, for example. Don't do something like that. In the beginning, just try to make it completely flat. Even now, it's time to include stones or pebbles or gravel or whatever you, or other materials, or just a straight, uh, like I am doing. And with the same sponge, try to create the texture slowly, trying to touch it. And while the 
mixture when while the paste uh, is drying you can retouch it and continue working now you see like very fresh more than this right you can see a big difference when it is drying will looks like this one mm? because it is losing the water it uh, it will evaporate and the real texture will appear later so if some customer came to you hey my texture is like nutella <laughs> and you say no just let dry let's dry and, and the texture will appear mm? but try to make homogeneous and uniform how much time it needs to dry well some hours maybe um, uh, maybe in one or two hours you can retouch it and will be a, mi a bit more dry but maybe in four or six hours is completely dry and the most important when it is dry you cannot remove it it's very very strong it's like plastic okay so be sure be sure that if you are using this um, will be forever i don't recommend you i recommend I, I don't recommend you because you will dry just the external uh, surface of the mixture but inside will keep fresh and um, maybe uh, it will not uh, provide you this nice texture in the end so my recommendation some products can be accelerated with the high dryer and other ones like this one i don't recommend you okay for that reason so just let dry in a natural way and go to do another thing that is exactly what we will do now but just the way is with a sponge if you want to place here a tank hmm? if you want to put a tank uh, over this texture I recommend you to do in, in, in the same in, in this way first apply a coat like this let dry second place the tank over and with a small brass old brass old uh, take a mat and adapt the tracks or the wheels to the surface do it in two layers don't place the tank right now just let dry and be sure that the look is nice and then in a second coat for example tomorrow you will adapt the tank or your vehicle to the surface doesn't matter if it's a tank truck tractor or a building or a tree doesn't matter but do it in two steps okay so now i will let dry in my table while we do another different thing also also we have for asphalt to create asphalt uh, that is very useful for big scales for example for 135 scale is very useful the asphalt you can make a, a long surface make flat even sand it um, there are different kind of texture uh, those are more uh, big but there are another more more thin for example for uh, beach sand and others well um, let's go to talk about acrylic paints which is almost the base of everything uh, and very important and I need to explain some important aspects that everybody should know uh, why acrylics and not lacquers or others particularly uh, personally I love lacquer paints I love them I love them because they are super easy uh, and you paint very fast and the look is always very nice uh, in fact I like uh, Gallanotes paints that are um, probably the best ones uh, from Japan uh, also Mr. Hobby are excellent paints but I have a problem I cannot use them because my health when I am painting with them I get very sick with a lot of headache and I, I, even I even if I love them I cannot use them and I have many but I cannot use them yes go to the balcony or go to the terraza and paint outside, no? but uh, you know how is the winter here in Europe. So, um, the best alternative for people who have problems with those strong paints, because of course are, are uh, toxic and, and can damage your health a lot, especially if you are with family, with pets, children. Um, the best alternative that is coming uh, generally in the world are the acrylics. So this is why the acrylics become very important in the market in the beginning was just something used for art uh, or manualities but uh, today 
uh, are very important also for modeling and each day the people use more and more and more and more. So this is the main reason why the acrylic appear in the market. They are totally healthy, uh, doesn't affect your health, are not toxic and even if you paint inside your home it's not a problem. You can smell for hours and nothing happen, okay? But everything looks great and fantastic, right? But not. It has also problems. Hmm? The problem is that you must learn how to work in a different way, like I explained you before. Each tool, each uh, paint needs a different way of application. So the acrylics need to be used in a different way too. So let me explain you how to do it in case that your customer or friends want to use them. Uh, first thing that we see is that um, those pen need to be shaked strongly before use it. Okay, uh, as you can you can hear, eh, or, or paints contain also a steering bar to shake it well, but almost all acrylic need to be shaked very 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 well. That is the first point. If you don't shake it, it will be catastrophic. If you use directly from the bottle. Um, so let me make an example of painting. Uh, how to dilute and how to work with the, those paints. Of course, the pressure in your eyebrows must be the same than before. One kilogram, one kilogram and a half maximum. And uh, even if those paints came already diluted for the eyebrows, I recommend you even dilute much more. And I will explain you how. Uh, why I I show you here different products because those can be mixed with all of them, even with the cleaner, eh? to improve the performance and or the application of the colors. Uh, theoretically, and I say theoretically because you can use the others for other purposes, the basic one must be the acrylic thinner. Eh? This is the most important for your paint. So if someone wants to buy acrylic, Please, buy the acrylic thinner. And why the acrylic thinner are not water? Because uh, even if those are water-based, this will help to the paint to, um, to have a better performance over the azure face. Will work much better, will cover much better than just with water. Because this keeps the properties of the, um, of the paint, while the water destroys the structure of the paint. This is something chemical, but just trust me, <laughs> because I was working with that during a long time. <laughs> so just to avoid problem, mix with the acrylic thinner, or like you said before, if you want to make transparencies, working with transparencies, you can mix with the transparator that you have in glossy or in satin. During many years, I used a lot of transparator to make the modulation, for example, to make the gradation and volume in, in the models. Um, and I like the glossy one because I always prefer a satin surface in my models. But for the people who want a matte look, I recommend you the matte transparator. The satin varnish or matte varnish is also another option because some people want a glossy or satin surface in the paint, so you can mix with satin varnish too. Hmm? So, to avoid complication, I will explain you how to use just with the acrylic thinner and some drops of cleaner. Uh, don't ask me why, but some people was trying with the cleaner mixed with this, and I say why? I say I don't know, but if you try, it, you will like it. So I try it and I like it. So <laughs> I, I need to study why the reason, but uh, it's true that works. No, sometimes this is uh, this is the hobby, no? That you must experiment, and and some people will mix with maybe with milk, and oh, with milk works very nice, and with gasoline too. Also, um, in fact, that was the origin of the modeling. Everybody was using uh, home stuff. To, to make the modeling, no? So, fortunately, now we have more time, uh, more money and less time. So, we save time uh, investigating. Uh, in fact, uh, even if the pigments, for example, was used in the modeling since long time ago, especially by railroad modelers from many, many, many years ago in USA mainly, I discovered the pigments thanks to the makeup of my mother. 
uh, when I uh, was painting my tanks, uh, I wanted to make dust and I didn't know how to do it. So I saw the, a little piece of makeup like this for, uh, for her. So I took her and I started painting. Oh my God, this looks dust. It was fantastic. A bit glossy and with uh, metallic particles, but it was cool no, in that moment. And thanks to that, I discovered later the pastels, the pastel chalks eh, that I used for art, because I studied art um, in the university. So I used those pigments for, for weathering the tanks. With time, I discovered that the pigments coming from the pastels was not nice because the pastels, the pastel chalks, contain Arabic rubber. That is the agglutinant of the pigment to create the strong and hard pastel chalks. So after that, I started developing just pigments for modeling with nice color, etc. No? So that was my origin with the pigments. Uh, let's go to paint with this. For these uh, colors, I recommend you a more mm, basic eyebrow or um, bigger needle. This is why I am switching to the air cobra because of course this paint have more density than uh, lacquer paint uh, remember i like lacquer but uh, because it's perfect instead that is not healthy oh, i recommend you to make the mixture outside for example in a little uh, bottle or hard uh, recipient like this one where you can make your mixture with the thinner and with the cleaner uh, I put here my paint directly, don't do that in your home. Few drops of thinner, approximately uh, you can add between a 20 to 30 percent of thinner, hmm? depending what you are painting. So you can experiment. If someone came to you, hey, how, uh, how is the percentage of the paint and thinner when you are painting with acrylics? you say, okay, between uh, 15 to 30 or 35, whatever you want. Try to experiment a bit more, a bit less. Eh? But it, this is not exactly a science that, that must be everything perfect with the right quantity. You can, you can investigate by yourself. And now, uh, where is my... Uh, here. And some people who paint planes, planes, they add cleaner few drops of cleaner to the mixture. But one more time, I recommend you to do that outside of your eyebrows. So yeah, you can see also that it's very smooth. I can paint very well without any problem. And I can start entering in my model and painting a camouflage. First, I make the outline lines, the shape of the camouflage, and now I will fill it slowly in very soft coats. So, if someone tells you, hey, I cannot paint with those paints, I cannot make thin lines or camouflage, you must dilute correctly, paint with the right pressure and in the, in the proper way. Let me see just the opposite and the brown, and the brown one, the brown option. Uh, this is correct, okay? I paint a very nice camouflage without any problem. And Let's see what happens if I paint in a brown way. For example, accumulating, like I told you that uh, you must avoid, like the people painting with, um, with lacquer. Okay? So some people painting with lacquer should do this. They start painting and accumulating. They overflow it. Okay, and they expect that the, when it dry will be completely flat and smooth, and it's not. You will see a bunch of craters, craters and holes and irregularities in the surface. 
because the acrylic doesn't auto leveling. Hmm? The lacquer auto level. Uh, they try, when you paint with lacquer, everything is like this, but when it is uh, drying, will become completely flat. But with the acrylics, this doesn't happen. Eh? So that is the main mistake and, and main problem when you are painting with acrylics. You can see like a small craters and a very ugly texture, right? In another hand, this is what I painted and it's completely flat and smooth. Uh, and this is something that you learn in the university when you are studying art, how to use the acrylics in the proper way. If I want to apply this color by brass, important, a primer, always a primer, always. Doesn't matter if it's transparent or, um, or any color, but always a primer eh, for acrylics, for acrylics. So let's see. I will put here a bit of color. Uh, avoid to use the paint directly or you will leave marks in the surface with your brush. When you are painting with acrylics, for all people who want to paint with acrylics, they must dilute the acrylic a bit with water. For example, 50% uh, of water and 50% of paint. And then you must start painting with transparent layers, maybe a bit more dense, something like this. Uh, let me show you with other camera uh, here, right? And this is the way to paint with acrylics when you have iris. You must dilute it with water, and now you can paint the shape of your camouflage with the transparent mixture. Yes, it's transparent and it's not solid and the look is strained, right? But this is the way how to paint. We will let dry and we will apply another coat. For example, if we apply this coat in this direction, the next coat will be in this direction. Another thing that we can do is for example, that is how the people paint hard edge camouflage in a more simple way. A way to paint hard camouflage is uh, using the color more um, straight from the bottle, not too much diluted. And for example, paint just the external shape of the camouflage by brass. Uh, sorry, uh, here. You paint just the shape, so you can paint very intricate camouflage, for example, Japanese camouflage or, or First World War camouflage. We can paint something like that. You don't need to be uh, very accurate or you don't need to cover very well the surface. We just paint the external shape of the camo. Okay. And now, with the eyebrows, we will fill it inside. So this is a different alternative to, for painting camouflage. Ah, remember that I told you that with the shaders, never close the eyebrows. Here is just the opposite. Eh? If you let dry for a long time, uh, the needle will be clogged by the dry acrylic paint. So my recommendation is to take a cleaner with a piece of tissue paper and clean just the top to keep it uh, without remains of paint. This is uh, how I paint when I am using acrylics. And now I can go inside. and start feeling, making a kind of clothes inside. Always smooth coats. Don't try to cover at once.
if it is glowing, uh, paint outside in the paper and go inside again. It doesn't matter if you go out of the lines with the eye rust because it's difficult to appreciate when you made the weathering. Well, I am finishing more this side just to show you that I can make a very nice camouflage, hard edge camouflage, very fast combinating brush with the eye brush. Super easy. And now I, uh, I put too much. What happened when this uh, occurred? Uh, just take a brush, remove the excess, dry with the paper, let dry and go inside. I will repeat the, this mistake here, just to show you. If I am painting and this happened, oh my God, very quick with the brush, I put a lot of water in the surface and remove with the paper. Okay, if you do fast, you can fix that problem. Okay, let dry and continue painting. This happened to me many times because some people think that I am a good model, but it's not true. I made many mistakes and all my efforts is just to hide my mistakes. Okay, so I finished here my camouflage. Uh, um, handmade camouflage, brass and eye brass in combination, which is looks uh, great and very fast, and everything by brass. And, but this is ugly, Mig. Yes, it's true. Let me finish because we need to apply several coats with this transparent mixture. Now in the other position, like I told you. More uh, coats of this diluted paint, more uh, flat and nice uh, will look in the end. Some people, I remember a modeler that was not able to use uh, eyebrows because uh, uh, health problems and he was able to paint only with brass and he even used 10 coats of acrylic to paint the camouflage and the base color but looks uh, like an eye brush. So this is a second coat, let dry, another one uh, and you will achieve a very nice result just painting with uh, the brass. Um, of course, here I painted only two and we need more, no? but just in case that you need to explain anyone, hey, how can I use those paints with a, without eyebrows. Okay, use it directly from the bottle, diluting uh, with a 50% of water. And then apply many coats, maybe five or six coats, and you will obtain an incredible fine surface like painted with eyebrows. Exactly the same. You cannot see the difference. See, for example this, no? uh, that you want to paint in a different color, because this is not the real green, no? but only this, not the body. So you can paint over directly, ah, man, it, it fits well, more than I expected. Ah, because it was very dusty, and maybe a bit old. Even if you can do it like you can see now, I recommend you a priming, a primer. Uh, no, seriously, because this plastic is not new, it's not fresh from the box. Uh, that oily remains that appear in the molds is not um, affecting to the acrylic paint. No? But anyway, just in case that someone finds problems, recommend a priming, a primering. It's like when you try to put uh, water over an oil surface, no? What happened? That the, the water doesn't fit very well in the surface, no? Most of the plastics um, have that oily uh, remains 
and this is why I recommend you to to apply the primer or wash before the construction with soap. Well, but you can see that I I, I was able to paint it eh? by my, for my surprise. I am not too accurate right now, but you can paint it. You can see that you can paint it because the plastic is old, it's not new, it's not fresh. But probably will be not the same if they just bought the kit, they construct and they try to paint it. This is why I am giving you those advices, just in case they are doing correctly and not with an old kit like this one, okay? It is drying. I think that you was able to see how to use the colors with the eyebrows, right? Maybe we, we can give here the, the last coat of diluted paint. Okay. In fact, people painting figures is the, is the method that they use for base colors. They paint in that way, using very transparent coats of acrylics. Yeah, so this is not my technique, it's not something new. Yeah, it's how they use the acrylic colors. Okay? So here we have all examples. The bad way, brass with eyebrows, eyebrows, eyebrows in a bad way. That here you can see. Let me see. You see here the, that is not nice, mm? okay? The primer is the most important step in any process of the modeling. It's the most important. Uh, and people who make, for example, civil cars and, and uh, planes know it very well because civil cars and planes are the most difficult areas of the modeling because must be perfect and they need a very good primary. Uh, and for planes, for planes, the people use the one shot. The one shot is more thin primer than the Titans, the Sprite one. Uh, and the one shot is extremely good, but must, must be applied by eyebrows and uh, will be less strong than the one by Sprite. I have tried many Sprites uh, from different brands before we choose the Titan ones from Italy and we are associated now with them. Why? Because I was testing and that one was the best one in my opinion. So this is a strong and you cannot remove from the surface. Of course, if you take a twist and you start scratching, you will remove it, but not with your fingers. Well, the problem is that if even if you apply now a varnish coat over your model, uh, this doesn't help to fit the paint over the surface. Just is, just, uh, it's like, um, for example, the glasses from the cars, the windshield in the car. Those glasses have a plastic protection in both sides to avoid that when you crash the car, the little fragments came to you, right? What you will do if you apply varnish now is exactly that. You will uh, apply a kind of plastic protection outside. But anyway, if you touch it, finally you will remove it because the varnish will be not enough strong and thick to keep together all uh, components of the, of the acrylic paint. You, you will need to apply a very thick coat of varnish to avoid that the paint peel off. If I apply a nice primer in my model, will be difficult that I scratch it. Impossible. I need to, to scratch a lot. I, am, I cannot, I cannot remove it. I need something very sharp like this to damage. Now I can damage. Yeah. Yeah. Eh? But I am making a lot of pressure, but with your fingers, impossible, impossible that you, with my nails, impossible. The, the enamel product is something that is very useful, especially uh, for tanks, for planes, for blending colors. There are differences between 
acrylic filters and enamel filters. Most of the enamel products, uh, the basic one was the washes, originally was the washes, that uh, probably everybody know it. Uh, this is the most common thing. The wash is uh, enamel product to um, accentuate the panels, the details, and to create more contrast. So usually the washes must be dark colors, but the filters are um, something different. Uh, the filter just modify the surface, the whole surface with a different color. Like for example, the filters in photography, when you put a blue filter in front of the camera or an orange filter in front of your camera, the image will be uh, modified by the filter. Eh? So this is what means filter and uh, this is a, a wash uh, that are uh, different both. Um, we are creating now a coat of colors. Everything that is become uh, acrylic will be blue and now everything that will be uh, enamel will be red. Uh, originally it was yellow, but just in the future, if you see that it's red, it's enamel, blue is acrylic. Uh, easy to understand, especially when we are working. So let's see, uh, let's see the difference between one and the other and when to use one or other. Because some of your customers will prefer to use acrylic. For example, people who paint uh, figures uh, or Warhammer or those things, they prefer everything acrylic. So this is a good option. And other people, for example, me, that I like paint tanks, I prefer enamel. For, uh, for buildings, like that one, I recommend you better enamel. Eh? Just to avoid the same problem that happened to you, that, uh, to avoid that pale off. Uh, but let's see here how work one and the other. We will start with the acrylic one. Okay, you can shake it a bit, but it's not necessary. With the enamel filters, you need to shake, it, uh, to shake it very well. But with the acrylic, it's not necessary too much. With the filter, uh, with acrylic ones, remember, we are using the acrylic, okay, this one. Um, we can dilute a bit more with water or we can uh, apply straight from it. You can apply um, local filters to uh, create contrast between different panels or components in a vehicle, in a tank, in a plane. And you must avoid that these accumulate through the details. So don't allow the filter concentrate <coughs> around the details. It must cover the surface in a uniform way. Well, I used that to refer other purposes. But just like an example, is more than enough. Okay, this can be a filter. If we apply that in a plane, for example, that is full of panels and hatches and components, uh, we will obtain a beautiful look. The good thing of the acrylic is that it dries very fast, doesn't smell, and it's healthy, the same than the acrylics. But the main difference is that it dries very fast. So if we are doing something big with so many details and we want to work fast the acrylic option okay let it apply in the other side a dark filter don't overflow the surface just humify we can cover the whole surface or just some details and components So here you can see the difference between without filter, one yellow one and another gray or blue one. And see how everything is changing. So that's all about the filter, so simple. So simple and fast. Even we can um, over, uh, uh, overlap different layers of filters, is what I usually do. I try to put different layers of filters to create, to create more richness and more variety. Yeah, but this is the main principle of the filters. That's all, so simple. The enamel one, of course, shake it. Of course, if your bottle is in your store uh, or your, your place for many years, 
or long time, probably it will be more uh, decanted, de decantado. And this one must be used with enamel thinner, enamel odorless thinner. Okay. In case that you want to clean the brass, but I can use directly from the bottle. The good thing about the enamel is that um, you can uh, clean it if you if you don't like when it is dry, or you can mix it because it dry slowly than the other. It's more flexible. Okay, but the um, principle is exactly the same. The, the concept is the same than the other. The, po the, the, point is, the point is that I am using the same color than the base color, so you cannot see it very well. Let me see in this turret with so many effects. And also I will tell you that the filters is the first technique that you must apply in a model. Uh, uh, after uh, paint the base color. Okay, avoid this accumulation, avoid. Just a, will paint, just a small portion just to see the contrast, no? But this is basically a filter. Eh? Uh, to choose acrylic or enamel, up to you, depending if you want to go faster and faster dry, and if you don't like the smell of the enamel, or uh, like me, if you like the smell of the enamel, that is not toxic, it's not like the lacquer, uh, and it's more flexible. You can mix them, you can remove it if you don't like the final look, but you can apply many coats overlapping one with the other. Let's move now to the washes and let's see the difference. We have the same version of wash uh, in enamel or acrylic. The acrylic is a bit different to the filters. Uh, you need to blend it, you need to be more uh, accurate, you must be more careful when you are applying because must be in the areas um, where you want to enhance, to exaggerate the details. For the, for the washes, I recommend you a satin surface because the, um, the, the paint will flow faster through the lines and will not expand by capillarity. You must shake it. I told you, even if you don't shake it too much, you can take from the top, from the bottom and thin down with enamel thinner and will work in the same way. So it's not critical, the washes. But this doesn't happen with the acrylics. With the paint, acrylic paint, sorry. Of course, you must choose the right color also because I am using any. And with the uh, wash, we must try to apply it over the details letting work by capillarity through the lines and the details. Okay. Just touching, if the surface is enough satin, it will move through the lines very easily. Hmm? We are not covering the whole surface, just the details. Okay, this is the way to apply the washes. We must let dry and then we will remove it with a, um, a sponge or a tissue paper. I will show you later. Hmm? We are just creating contrast around the details. If the surface is satin, later will be very easy to remove it and to blend it. And I will explain you also different ways to blend it and to remove the excess. I will make it brown now, okay, in the other side. This is brown. Some people do that with the washes. Some people do that, eh? Hey, I am applying a wash, and then your tongue looks like a coal train. 
Some people do that for the washes. And they prepare a mess. Oh my God. Yes, <laughs> almost. No, in fact, there are a technique for fantasy, for figure, for Warhammers, that they put a figure and they submerge in a liquid and they look something like that, no? But, uh, okay, so with this one, you cannot fix it. This is terrible, okay? So this is the wrong way and this is the correct way to apply the wash, okay? So now let dry while we experiment with the wheel mill. Well, imagine that we have our plastic kit. Uh, this is more comfortable eh, than the windmill because it was too big. Um, we want to apply directly washes over my plastic kit. And I don't want to paint the base color because I am too lazy or because the kit is already assembled or have many, many, many colors and pff, could be terrible no? to paint color by color. So we can apply the washes directly over the plastic. Of course, it will not peel off or scratch like the acrylic, but if you touch too much, you will remove it, of course, because it's something oily over plastic and um, it can be removed a little if you touch too much. Okay. So, we, ca we can apply here the washes, yes, of course, directly, without any problem. The only problem is that the plastic is a bit satin and we will need to apply a varnish matte coat in the end and not acrylic, but enamel varnish coat, okay, or lacquer. Because what happened with the acrylic over the plastic that you, re you will peel off easily. So this is why Sometimes when I paint my wagons in N scale or HO, I combine acrylic washes with alcohol with enamel washes. I have an alcohol, but maybe the stuff from Hobby Time have alcohol. Oh, Do you have alcohol? Beer. No, no beer. <laughs> More alcohol. Gin, gin tonic, gin. Or whiskey. <laughs> Just alcohol for the... <laughs> 40, no más, más de 96. Okay, so you can see that I can apply the washes without any problem of the plastic. The plastic is not damaged. So you can work your model with enamel without any kind of problem. And here. Uh, I would like to apply different filters for each stone in this uh, concrete uh, part uh, to avoid that everything get too much uniform. But we must be subtle in that big surface, of course, to avoid to make too much uh, dirty. And we are using also a very dark color, no? But just in case that you have no other option, you can apply some washes in that way and now let dry and to see the difference. Well, the main difference with the acrylic washes and the enamel one is that when we uh, see that our wash is completely dry like this, okay, now we can blend it even if it is dry. We can fix some areas, we can remove the ugly parts. So it's easy to work with that. Y 
even with a sponge like this one, while it is still fresh, which is very important. Fresh, I mean, even now it's still fresh, eh? even looks dry. With a sponge like this, we can remove the excess of paint over the details faster and we will obtain a nice look uh, in comparison with this that is still clean and with a wash. Yeah. So, okay, it's not too much, but it's a nice way to make a weathering in a very fast way without too much complication. The same here, uh, we can use the sponge to remove a bit the excess and just let the, the washes in the details. Yeah. Just to make softer. It's not too much. It's not, a, it's not something uh, extremely nice, but we can apply the enamel washes over the plastic, no? especially for such kind of, of the tiles. Okay? Especially if the building is already constructed and we cannot do anything except something like that. This is a, a streaking effect that is enamel, but this is oil. Okay, the oil brasher and a streaking. The streaking is to make some effects of rust that also we can make directly over the plastic if we want. If we want to make a little rust, first we make some lines. Remember that I am working directly over the plastic, that is not the most optimal thing. And here I will paint with, now I will blend it. Eh? For example, if, we, if I want to make something very deep here, I will paint with oil. For example, a kind of shadow. For this, I will let dry a bit. For the streaking, I will blend now with a flat brass. Both must be worked with, uh, manipulated with an hammer overless thinner, okay? This is just to, to show you and demonstrate you that you can use this kind of product directly over the plastic. And of course, over the wagons and locomotives. If you do that, try to be unregular and random. And um, when this is uh, nice enough for you, just don't touch it. Let dry one day and then you can apply a, a matte coat of varnish around. Just in case that the people want to conserve the color, the plastic color of the kits. Okay, but again, this is much better if we apply a, prime, a transparent primer over our kits. Now I am not using a, enamel odorless thinner. My brush is totally dry. As much as, as more dry the oil, more easy will be to blend it. So, without thinner, without anything, we are blending the oil very slowly and we can create very nice effects over the plastic. Yeah, so, this is another method of make effects in your, in your buildings, in your trains. Also, for people who make tanks or planes, 
you can use this method to to make many effects also. And it's so easy. I am working like a little clothes, moving the, the brush like a clothes, with close movements. And you see that it's almost aerographic, no? Uh, it's very smooth. So this is another method. Uh, well, two options. Or first, we apply primer, transparent primer here. Yes, to start. And then work with the oils and washes and everything. Or if you haven't primed uh, your model and or you don't want or for any reason you cannot apply a primer first before to do this, do this and later apply a satin, uh, a matte varnish coat over yeah. or everything just to protect it okay, a, a bit. Yeah. Okay. Even if we let dry this for a while, it will be easy that it stay here forever. Instead, if we start touching and touching and remove it because it's just oil directly over plastic. But I recommend you to apply now a, a, a varnish coat, matte varnish coat over all of this just to protect it forever. Just if we want to work directly over the plastic for people making trains and railroad layouts and all of this. Can you use the lucky varnish for this? I, will, I would I recommend you better enamel varnish. It's because the lucky varnish is acrylic and again the same problem that to avoid that the acrylic something, doesn't matter varnish or paint, cane off and peel off, uh, use enamel directly over the plastic. In fact, this um, this one is not acrylic. It's not water-based, okay? So this is why it's so strong and resistant. Okay? So, if you want to protect this now, um, try to take a, any enamel varnish, matte, from any brand, and protect it, and that's all. If you uh, just painted a tank like this or this in camouflage like uh, any others that this is the most standard apply the washes and everything and don't apply any varnish at the end never never and why because first the oil and all effects will fit very well in the surface will stick very well in the surface and second remember what i told you in the beginning about satin matte and glossy if you are working with different texture through the process of your model, for example, in a plane or in a tank, if you apply a matte varnish at the end, you will kill all different textures in your model. For example, if your wheels are uh, rubber, satin in rubber, uh, with dry matte and fresh matte and, and some components in satin color and other in glossy, like a matching gun or, the, or other, other ones, if you apply a matte coat and you cover everything, all of those little uh, subtle appearance will disappear. So this is why I never, never recommend to apply a matte varnish coat at the end of the process. Instead, if we are working houses for trains, for example, and you don't want to paint a base color, then it's okay. Let me make a difference between uh, um, wagons for trains and tanks or planes, okay? Let's divide in two blocks because one is one story and another is another story. In the beginning, you was asking me about tanks, about the problem of losing the textures if, have a, if I apply pigments over a satin or uh, things like that and you want to protect the pigments. Let me explain you step by step. First, that block and second, we will move to wagons, okay? One, primer. Good. Second, base color plus satin. Uh, the base color, re remember that I told you that you can mix it with satin varnish or transparent or satin, uh, in satin version to make a little more satin for the next process. Third, uh, 
well, here we make an exception and put decals. That is another story, but continue with the weathering. Uh, after the base color, filters. Ford, washes. Remember that we are working over the satin surface, okay? Washes, um, for example, now uh, oils um, fading. Now I will explain you that also. We are also working over satin. So, when the pigments are coming and we want to make a, a difference between the matte pigments because it's dust or dry matte and the tank is satin because the tanks are satin, in fact, not matte. Except some modern bakers, for example, the MTAB American ones or the N1 Abrams or others that are very matte from the factory but most of the tanks, more of the, most of the vehicles are usually satin, like a Sherman from the Second World War, Panzer IV, Tiger I, T-34, usually all of those tanks was painted in a kind of satin paint, not matte, okay? Which is a very common mistake. Says, uh, six, oil fading, chipping. Chipping, for example, and now it's time for the pigments that can be uh, dust or dirt or even other effects like rust. Hmm? All of those are matte. Okay? All of those are matte. But all of those process was made over satin because those works better over satin. Mm? So, what happened when the pigments are coming? We will use a kind of agglutinant, glutinant that is enamel uh, nature, nature effects. Okay, I, I will use like an agglutinant, mix it with the pigments, enamel uh, natural effects. Mix it together will help to fix the pigments over the satin surface. So I will create matte uh, areas, matte effects over satin areas, and that contrast will make my model realist. I don't need, I don't need, um, no need, uh, varnish at end. We don't need varnish at the end because the pigment will be fixed to the surface. Even I, if you touch it, nobody will remove it. I have models from many, many, many years ago that I used pigments and still there, the pigments. And I touched them in a very bad way. I put in the model contest. I, I went to many places and the pigment is still there. Um, thanks that I mix it with a little uh, enamel uh, nature effects. If you put the pigment directly over the satin, it will be difficult that they stick in the surface. Okay. Uh, another trick, another trick, if you don't want to do this, is make some areas with matte varnish applied with eyebrows where you want to apply the pigments only the areas where you want to apply the pigments. Then the pigment will fix uh, very well and will stick very well in the surface. And you don't need to use this kind of agglutinant. Eh? So this is another option. Um, long time ago, what I made is if my model is satin, like this one, that you, you see that it's a bit satin, right? So long time ago, I used a sun color matte sand color, for example, a Tamiya buff or Tamiya dust, or even one of the acrylic ones. And I applied a, a little coat of dust with the eyebrows in the areas where I wanted dust. Yeah? Then I applied the pigments and the pigment was uh, sticking in that area, only in that area. And 
the rest of the areas without that uh, coat of dust was still uh, satin like this one. So this, this was a, other, another method. But anyway, never apply a, a varnish coat at the end to avoid that the pigment disappear or something like that because it's not necessary, trust me. You don't need it. Just leave some areas in satin and other areas matte and other areas glossy and your model will be more attractive. Let's go to the other side, to the wagons, to the trains. Um, uh, with the wagons, we can use, uh, but this is like to talk about another paint demonstration completely different than today. To talk about uh, wagons for trains. Uh, usually those came with uh, in plastic and with all lettering, the stencils and everything, so those are beautiful. And okay, what we can do? If we paint with primer and we paint the base color in a click, all stencil and all lettering in, in the wagon will disappear, no? So we must put a decal and that may complicate it, especially if you want uh, five, uh, 50, 50 uh, wagons in your diorama, in, in your layout. So there are many techniques to paint the wagons. One, for example, is to paint directly over um, the plastic with acrylic washes but acrylic using acrylic paints, acrylic paints. For example, take the dust of this one or a dark color or a gray color and dilute it with alcohol and then apply the washes with alcohol and acrylic over the wagons. The alcohol doesn't damage the stencils and it will modify the properties of the acrylic, making it more strong and more sticky in the plastic. So washes and effects with acrylic and alcohol will be very strong, okay? Over that, we can apply them uh, enamel washes, also oils, and even pigments, but also with the same method. Mix it with, um, with a kind of agglutinant, like I told you before here. Uh, mix the pigment with a kind of agglutinant, another enamel product, and that enamel product will help to fix the pigments in the surface of the wagon. Okay, a very fast way to make the weathering in a in a truck, in a in a wagon, uh, using acrylics. Here I have some uh, rusty colors and black, and some color. Uh, for example, for the black chassis we can take those two colors ah and let me see if this works like alcohol or not eh? because i am not sure because some products damage the stencils in the wagons but the pure alcohol the one that you can buy in a pharmacy doesn't damage the stencil of the wagons so very important let's try with this one from mr hobby if this damage or not. We can dilute the, the acrylic with the alcohol like, uh, like if it is water, okay? So we are making here a mixture. You can see that it is diluting correctly. And the alcohol is destroying the properties of the acrylic and it will help to um, to to expand very well over the um, the plastic of those wagons because you, if you apply the acrylic directly probably doesn't stick well but with the alcohol works very nice okay so we can apply in a kind of wash i am not covering completely the the surface We are preparing um, a solution box for wagons at AMO uh, that we will release very soon, very soon, explaining all of those techniques. Uh, well, I use, use alcohol 96 and it has worked very well, but I was trying with another similar product like alcohol and those remove the, the ink or the stencils of the wagons. So 
The only thing that I am 100% sure that the alcohol doesn't attack the stencils, which is the most important for trains. Uh, I start always applying a kind of washes with transparencies uh, uh, because it expands very, very well through the details. Later I will come back here. So when you dilute it with alcohol, you can work the acrylic like if it is oil. Let's see if this is damaging or not the decals. <laughs> and doesn't matter if it is drying too fast or not, because we can return later for example we can paint like here almost painting directly from the color and then we can blend it with the alcohol If you work with too much alcohol, obviously it will be more complicated to blend it. So it's the same that when I was explaining you the, the enamels, try to work with the exactly quantity of thinner, where definitely, in, under my opinion, um, this is not bad option, not bad option, uh, but the alcohol, the pure alcohol, works a bit better. Dilute more when the paint is dry. Uh, the alcohol remove it and... Uh, I ho how to say... Um, when the acrylic color is already dry over the bagum, the alcohol makes the paint again fresh, like new. This one is not so strong like the alcohol. So, uh, this is good. The alcohol, the pure alcohol, is a bit better than this one, eh? but you can use the, this one from Mr. Hobby too. It's a bit more soft. Now, after, after this was, um, because the alcohol will make the, the, um, that acrylic more strong and more, um, more sticky in the surface, now we can paint with acrylic directly to paint the different boots. One more time, because I started applying water with alcohol and acrylic, now the acrylic um, uh, stick very well in the surface.
Well, before I continue um, explaining you, uh, we will continue with the wagon right now. But now that I will use a new brass, um, until now I was using the yellow ones, okay? The yellow, the yellow brasses are very cheap brasses. Are the brasses that I use very often. Most of them are the yellow one. Very cheap, I use for many models, in fact, uh, but are very cheap. Uh, the red ones, uh, Marta Kolinsky, uh, are used for figure painters or for something like uh, I will do now, that is chipping, for example. For chipping, for, for a lot of accuracy, I need um, very good brushes and I save the red ones for that purpose. Also, I have here uh, another ones. The grey ones are used for dry brass, that I will show you later only for dry brass, that is a special hair for that. Those white color are for decals, the people applying decals in the planes or very complex decals, or for civil cars, I recommend you those brasses that are perfect for that. There are rubber brasses like this one, uh, that is rubber, that is used for example, uh, for pigment application, for metal application and other purposes. And finally, the blue ones are used for pigments, okay, that are very hard uh, brass and this is good because you can press and introduce the pigment very well in the surface. So each brass has a different purpose. And now I will use this Marta Kolinsky because I want to make a uh, chipping in the wood. And the yellow one uh, is a bit old and not too precise for, for this task. The, those ones are really expensive, but are really very good, especially for figure painters. So here, When you make the chipping in the booth, especially if this is an old wagon, don't do in all uh, plates and in, in all um, uh, wooden pieces. Just try to keep concentrate near the um, near the door, for example. I mean, don't do in all boots in, in all areas, or you will be crazy. You will spend too much time for for something that must be just a, a small touch. Remember how I explained you uh, to make the washes here? Uh, we were not able to finish that process. This is unfinished, okay? Because later we needed to remove the excess of wash. And it's a pity because now I am doing the same, but I needed to explain you before in that example. But basically I am doing the same. I am applying the wash only in some areas and letting expand by capillarity. I am working without, without uh, too much control, uh, very fast, just because it's a pain demo, but you can go more slowly but anyway, even if you make very fast, you will obtain a nice, a nice look. And finally, we will make the dust. And now, well, we can see a bit of different, no? <laughs> right now. is getting better and better and now let's ma let's make the the dust it's very important to decide uh, what we want in our wagon if uh, we want a coal wagon or it's for sun it's a sun and people's wagon or depending of the environment so we can we can make a large variety of dust no uh, or black dust or gray or green or, or, or sun color 
just uh, apply this one that always, you no, know, maybe this is too dark, Russian hair. Just explaining this method uh, for all kind of vehicles, tanks, plane, well, planes uh, for, the, for the wheels maybe, but for all kind of weathering when we are using pigments, is, uh, the key is to mix it with a bit of enamel product. In that case, let me find a, for example, this is enamel, eh? so I will shake it. So if I apply just the pigments, probably the pigment will disappear in a few days if I touch it because I need to play with the, with the cars and over the rails. So, so it's normal that this can disappear very fast. So the way is to mix. A bit of pigment with the enamel product. Maybe too much. I will put more pigment. And now thinner. Now become more dark. And this is very normal with the pigments when we humify. Doesn't matter which pigment, but when you humify with thinner or water or alcohol, it becomes very dark, but it will recover the original color later. Don't try to make too much dust since the beginning. It's better to apply a couple of layers if it's necessary, because I told you, if, when it is dry, it will be much more than you can see now. And don't worry for blended. We will blend it when it is dry. Apply only in the lower areas of the boot. You can see how it is getting more light, right? When it is drying. <coughs> if we want more intensity, we can do now. And finally, we will blend it. Um, because I told you that the, that the enamel need time for dry, maybe even 12, ja 12 uh, hours or even more, even if it is dry now, we can remove the excess with a sponge and to blend the color thanks to the sponge. But the difference with apply only pigment is that it will be completely um, fixed or sticky in the surface after, after some hours. <coughs> Even we can remove with the finger the excess. The fixer, when it is dry, it's impossible to remove it. So this is, recommend is, is recommendable when you are making, for example, the running gear area of a tank that you need to apply many layers of pigment and um, very thick, then you can use the pigment fixer. But for uh, subtle and smaller things, I recommend you better to use an enamel product like this dust that even reforce the effect of the dust. Um, and you can blend it and you can retouch it after it is dry. This is the main, the main difference. So I prefer this method and the fixer. I never use it. <laughs> I use it one time just to, to test the product and I never use it anymore. And the people ask me and I don't recommend my own product. Eh? So, <laughs> but I try to be honest. I, I am honest. Don't mix uh, or don't confuse with the enamel wash. Eh? This, those are natural effects for dust, hair and others is to take a sponge, humify in, uh, in thinner, and if we want to remove the excess of dust, this is the way. 
eh, if we want to make more subtle. Mm? So this is why I like this method, because you can retouch it even a few hours later. For, for sure, tomorrow will be completely dry, you can play with it, you can touch it, and nothing, and nothing will happen. But always following this method, with acrylic colors with alcohol, or this one that was not, uh, not bad at all, eh? first, al uh, acrylic with this, or alcohol, second, we apply washes, mm? and finally we use the pigment and a natural effect to, to fix the product in the surface. Um, later you can take in your hand and you will see less contrasted than in the TV, because I don't see here, like in the TV, I see in the TV like more contrasted. Um, but I am trying any way to exaggerate, to show you how to do it. Eh? But uh, you can change the color, you can make different variations, and you will see how it's very fast to paint a wagon in that way. And, and, and really, really, really fun. Really fun. In my opinion, eh? especially to paint the black, ugly parts of the wagon like this. Now compare this with this. No? So. I think that, ah, and we forgot the inside, because inside we can do many, many things. There are a product that is very useful for the people making wagons, that is the gravel and sand uh, uh, glue. That is a bottle like this, it's also transparent, um, and I use that to add uh, stones and, and rest of uh, hair inside the wagons, then I glue it with this one, and finally I apply matte varnish, and the look is amazing. So easy and amazing, very, very, very realistic. A pity, because I, I doesn't bring with me many examples of my wagons. If I know that, I, I would like to bring those examples to show you. The main problem is when you use something acrylic over enamel. That is something that you must avoid. Uh, so don't, you, don't start using acrylic washes or something like that. If you already apply enamel washes or oils so you must avoid completely that order first always acrylic and second and to finish enamel or to work everything with acrylic 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 but never acrylic over enamel or oil never never that is the worst combination well looks the same but it's completely different one or the other for example if you try to apply this filter with the eyebrows and try to make the effects that I made with the shader, it's impossible. You doesn't cover the surface with this one, with the filter, uh, with the enamel filter. Uh, and with this one, more or less the same problem. Um, both are completely different kind of paints. This is very intense, but at the same time, extremely transparent. This is why when I put here, looks like black yeah. or very dark. Well, uh, th this is uh, more blue, but it looks very dark because it's very concentrated. Those filters are less concentrated and are co totally different formula. It's more for brass, to apply with the brass and control over a surface. Uh, if you try to do uh, the same word and with the filters, with the shader, also will happen the same problem, that uh, this will be too intense and you will not obtain the effects with the filters. The filters are used mainly for planes and tanks. When you want to change the base color and you want to create even more deep and richness, uh, we, uh, the people who make tanks try to work with many layers to create a lot of deep in the paint. We are trying to find that, and the filters provide us that deep richness and sometimes unify the camouflage. Okay. This is the purpose of those filters. Uh, while this is just to create effects, very aerographic effects, even I don't recommend you to use this one with brass. I recommend you always with eyebrows to create very fine lines, uh, paneling, uh, shadows, uh, like I saw you in the cardboard, uh, in the laser paper house, that you can create very subtle effects 
and you never will damage the house. Even if you make any mistakes, uh, it will almost disappear. So you need many layers to create a volume. So even if it looks similar, both are different kind of paint. Even the three ones are totally different. Acrylic is dry faster and have a little more intensity, but only by brass. This one also by brass, but more flexible because you can blend it. And this one exclusively for the eyebrows, um, for matte surfaces, uh, and, and to create the other effects that I showed you in, in the beginning. Maybe it's a bit confused for the customers sometimes, no? Because, okay, so what is the difference, no? But uh, depending what you want to do. If the customer asks you, hey, what is the difference? Ask him, what you are doing? Tanks, planes, ciencia fiction, uh, trains? Houses, if he tells you tanks, this one. If he tells you planes, acrylic one. If he tells you ciencia fiction, this one, acrylic also. Eh, to make panels and different effects. And I make uh, laser cut houses or houses or trains. Maybe this one is more subtle and more safety for them. Originally, uh, a guy from Spain, not me, developed a technique that was uh, oil dot technique that was uh, using different oil colors combined in a surface to create uh, more variety of uh, in the surface. So the technique was so simple. He just painted uh, with four different colors the surface, making small dots. I will show you here, for example, small dots in the surface, like this. Maybe the light colors in the top areas and the darker ones, ah, less here. No, it doesn't matter. You will see why it's not important that this happen. Now the next color, ocre. And this technique was very nice to create variety of colors, but too slowly, no? because you need to go color by color, painting, making the dots in all surface of your tank, so it takes time. And one more time, I am the laziest modeler in the world. So when I uh, started making this technique, I thought, ah, it's very nice, but it takes too long for me. Because what I wanted to do is many tanks, not not nice ones, but many. So okay, it's nice, but when you need to do the whole turret and the chassis of the tank and all parts, you see that it's too much work. The brown color, okay. As you can see, I do that work four times with a brush like this that is specifically for, for um, blending this kind of effects. And uh, odorless thinner, removing the excess. Then I will start blending with vertical movements like this, blending the colors first, one round, Okay, now I clean the brass again, remove the excess, again. I am doing very fast, no? just like an example. But basically this is the technique. Again, but always cleaning the brass. And with not too much thinner. This is why I dry my brass in the tissue paper. <coughs> okay, that was the dot technique. Okay, making a, um, a surface with many effects and many lines and very colorful. Especially when it is dry, the look is very nice. Okay, that was the dot technique. Now we must let dry and the look will be beautiful. Especially if you do in, in the whole tank, it's not the same to see something flat like this and boring than this surface. Of course, you cannot see now because it's still fresh, so you must let dry, obviously. 
So what is the difference with the streaking product and the streaking technique? That, when I saw that technique, I thought, oh, it's too much work for me. Why not I use only one color? Mm, doesn't matter. Uh, well, this is not the most appropriate color for this, but I will explain you how to do it. And even if the container is the same, the method is a bit different. I just paint lines from my model, vertical lines, and doesn't matter if the lines are too nice or not, okay? Just I need to paint, I will make with the brush faster. This product is also uh, in a bottle of 35 milliliters. Eh? The brass that is inside uh, can be cleaned and you, um, and you can take care of it like a normal brass. But the problem is that my brass was dry and now I am cleaning it. Okay, now it's better. So I continue making just lines from the top to down. All, all, always from top down. And now I will do exactly the same than before with a flat brush, blending the color. With the same method, drying the brass, cleaning and repeating. So, uh, it's basically something similar, but this is much faster and more monochromatic because you are using just one generic color that um, represents the discoloration or the dirt from the size of a vehicle. I use a lot this technique, always. You can use also in wagons, locomotives, um, everything. Okay. So, it's basically the same. Mm, when it is dry, it will be like a very smooth lines with vertical effects, and this is more colorful. Are uh, provide you a more faded, F, more faded look, more faded. Um, this gives you a sensation of discoloration. And this option gives you a more sensation of dirt, uh, um, drag it in the size of any vehicle. So the final meaning will be a bit different. The way how to do uh, both are similar. That is the main difference. So people who want more discoloration or, um, or more colorful or, um, or they have more time, they can choose this option. If they want to go fast, you try to imagine that you must paint a, a 135 armored train like this, very big, something like this. And you need to paint with this technique all sides of the train. <laughs> it's better to do something like that, more simple but faster. So one more time, many of those techniques are for people who have not enough time or they want to go fast and that's all. Or with people that don't want to be involved painting four different colors in one side of a tank. That's all. So depending the um, your goals, you will go in one direction or in another. The solution box that we made, that uh, no, this is just the book inside the solution box. The solution box is a box that contains all necessary to paint a model from the beginning to the end. That's all. The mat, the washes, the chipping, and everything. And this is the booklet of the first one. We have many about for planes, starships. We want to make also for trains. And this is explained in a very simple way. You will see now. Uh, here we explain in four language uh, what is each product that con contain it inside. Second, you have a a very clear instruction about what is each thing, each symbol, uh, let dry or paint or blend it or uh, use the sponge. Very intuitive. And 
the steps are so simple. It's, it's uh, extremely simple, and this is why become very successful. Step one, primer. Primer. <laughs> Which one? This one. Uh, use eyebrows, 1.5 kilograms, 10 centimeters far away from the surface, and let dry 24 hours. So easy. Second step. Second. Very easy. Base color. Which one? This color. S follow this process for drying the coats, shake it the bottle. It symbol have a meaning. So, in each page you have a step. And finally, only following the instructions and using the products inside the box, for example, making the, the boot in the tools, how to do it very, very, very well detailed. Even the tracks and everything. And finally, with the product that is inside the box, you will obtain this result in, in your model. Exactly the same result because exactly uh, they will use is the same colors eh, that I am using for to make this example. So nobody can say I don't know how to paint it or I don't know uh, how to do it or in which order or how much time to let dry each process because everything is explained here. I don't know if you guys have uh, solution boxes here in the shop. Yes. One like an example because this is the best solution for, for uh, beginners. And the typical guy that come to your shop, for example, and tell you, hey, I bought this Sherman tank. I don't know which paint I sold by to paint my model. And you give the box, this box. This is a solution box, for example, for Pacific uh, planes. But not only for the core side, you have many other options here. And everything here, is the paints everything that you needed to paint it. For example, um, let me make zoom. You have the varnish, the streaking, the oils, the glossy varnish, even some uh, brushes that you will need it, thinner, the right color washes for, for those colors, the camouflage, the interiors, everything is here and everything is plainly with the booklet. Yeah, so, this is uh, the best option for a modeler that than want everything and also want explanations. Okay, because the booklet is the most important. No, but, but we, are, we are working in, uh, we already are working and we are preparing for maybe for September, October. Uh, we'll be ready for, uh, for sale, but uh, for US, for American trains. Um, British, uh, German, um, and some other that I cannot remember now. But uh, but we are but also we need to make some of them specifically for wagons, for structures, for some locomotives, steam locomotives or diesel locomotives. So we need to do a lot of things. But uh, we are starting right now. Uh, and a special product for trains only, a specific uh, products for them only for them, because the people who paint trains are complete. I, I discovered that it's a different world than tanks or planes, and they need something <coughs> totally different. You cannot, you cannot give them something like that that is a, a Russian camouflage for a green, because, uh, come on, I want my green for my windmill. I don't want the Russian camouflage, but it's the same. No, but I don't like it. Uh, mm, thank you very much to stay here all of this time because you were very patient. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Discover many more videos on our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and activate notifications. Thank you for watching.